Today on Carcass, we catch some air and roll a slightly used UTV. We spend all of our hard-earned cash on a broke-down bug, and we cut apart a perfectly good Can-Am. You're watching Carcass. When you want to build something different, you turn to these guys, Jeremy Wegman and Jimmy King. Jeremy was raised in Minnesota building street rods. He's a builder, fabricator, and welder. Jimmy grew up in Nevada, working in his dad's garage building cars. He's a mechanical engineer, builder, and fabricator. They take left for dead rides and transform them into one-of-a-kind builds. If you can dream it, they can build it. This is Carcass, a non-traditional speed shop. Today on Carcass, we're in search of a brand new project vehicle, and we think we're going to find it in Lewisburg, Tennessee. You never know what we'll drive off with next. Diamond in the rough. That's not a diamond. It's a Volkswagen. No, I know, but you take the fenders off, then it'll be cool. Right now, it's just, it looks like a gumdrop with wheels. It's a gumdrop. This is a 2000 Volkswagen Beetle. In its prime, it got 49 miles to the gallon. But what's important to us is the wheelbase, which is just under 99 inches. Yeah, that's going to be good. This will be cool. This will be a good build. Yeah. I just got to hope we get, uh, start, supposedly, it runs. Yeah. If not, oh. we got a trailer. Yeah. And the winch might work. That's a, that's a big might. <laughs> you go load it up? Let's go load it up. All right. Let's see if this darn thing's gonna stop. If there isn't popped, ooh, that's fancy. Ooh, it's spark. That's a good sign. Nice. <laughs> Try it again. I can't shut it off. <laughs> I don't know how to shut it off. Can you lock and unlock the door? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we'll pull the ramps on the trailer before we go any further because I don't want to listen to this thing all day. Well, all there's left to do now is to get this thing back to the shop. You might be wondering what we're doing with this Volkswagen Beetle, but, well, Jimmy, should we tell him? No, keep him guessing. Oh, you heard the man. While we figure out what to do with our Volkswagen Bug, we decided to take an inspirational drive. This is our Can-Am Maverick X3 Turbo. Well, to be clear, it's our wrecked X3 Turbo. It's been rolled, but like only once. And this thing is awesome. It's got a 900cc three-cylinder turbo engine that makes 120 horsepower. On top of that, it's got Fox shocks on all four corners that allow up to 18 inches of suspension travel. And I'll tell you, I've driven this thing and it rips. Let's go. This Can-Am can fly. With this thing in two-wheel drive, we hammered it in and out of the corners, floored it through the straightaways, and had a blast getting it covered in mud. platform on this thing just works. It's got plenty of horsepower. It runs great. The suspension system just flat out works. And what better place to test this than at Adventure Off-Road Park?
As we wore out our welcome at AOP, Jeremy and I put the pedal to the metal and launched our mud-covered UTV over some jumps. Something ain't right here. That don't work. Check it out. Ha! Well, I did say this thing could go over almost anything, but it's only if you've got four good tires, not three. That kind of ruins our day. Yeah. We just gotta try to figure out how to get back, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, we could drive it. Yeah, I suppose it's already broken. Might as well just drive yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you're driving. <laughs> I didn't do it. You did it. <laughs> so you get to drive it out. Well, that sucked. We rip it. We get rid of it. We cut into it. How we get from this to this. Coming up, you're watching Carcass. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Been waiting to see these two things next to each other for a very long time. Yeah, this is gonna be absolutely awesome. This is crazy, these things are basically the same size. I think that body's gonna fit perfectly on this and give it a lot of personality. Oh, it's gonna have so much attitude. Yeah. This is gonna be amazing. That's right, you heard us. We're gonna take our used and slightly abused Volkswagen Beetle and put it on top of our Can-Am X3. Now, we're not the first one to do this, but Jimmy and I are gonna put our own little spin on it. It's gonna be a Baja bug. <laughs> you know what, Jimmy? There's not a whole lot of this car we're gonna end up using. I don't think so. If we're gonna put this body on the side-by-side, -side, we're gonna have to cut this thing up. Yeah, you know, the seat's not even attached. We're gonna end up using the steering and all the suspension off of the Can-Am, so this can all go. I think so. I think the very first thing we gotta do is get rid of all the interior, and uh, we might as well, I guess, get to work, huh? The Beetle is a unibody car, which means that the chassis and the body are all one piece. We're gonna have to cut the floor out of this thing to set the shell on top of the side-by-side, -side, so we're gonna have to trash the interior. This is one of our favorite parts of the build because we love seeing how big of a junk pile we can make. Oh, never mind. In reality, this teardown took us about five hours. We stripped everything from the headliner and carpet to the entire dash. I'll tell you what, dude, for such a tiny car, this thing is surprisingly roomy without the interior in it. Right, this thing's huge. Mm, the pile outside is just as big as the car, but it's nice. Yeah, this is awesome. Now that the nasty interior is out of the way, we're gonna move to the outside of the car. Now we're only interested in the steel body of this car. So all that plastic and the bumpers and the fenders can come off and hit the scrap pile. Come on, strong guy. That works. That's an easy way to do it. 
I mean, or you could take it off that way. All right, I got it. Cool, man. With the fenders and the bumpers out of the way, we can see the bare metal, and that's gonna give us a good idea of what we need to cut to separate the shell from the chassis. All right, Jimmy, I think we're ready to start cutting this thing apart. Yeah, me too, but there's one thing we gotta watch out for. Uh, the fuel lines are on my side somewhere in here, so I'm gonna find those and mark them, and the fuel tank is still full of gas, so we gotta be careful. Yeah, that sounds good. We obviously can't use the torch, so we've got a couple different tools we can use, and if you wanna mark that side out, I'm gonna get to cutting on my side. All right, I'll mark it out. We're gonna cut holes in the floor with a cutoff wheel to get the reciprocating saw in place. Then we're just gonna run the whole length of the floor and cut this thing apart. We found these to be the best tools for the job. And as we were cutting, we were being mindful of the fuel lines running under the floor on the passenger side. All right, I think that's the last cut, Jeremy. Man, it took us long enough. Um, there's probably only one way to really pick this up. Let's move it onto the hoist and use the hoist to pick the thing up. Roger, let's do it. Deal. Nope, I ain't turning, hang on. <laughs> Flat tire, you hear that? <laughs> what is that? Listen to that. There's fix a flat in it too, that's why yeah. it's making that bubbly sound. Yeah, we ran over the screw and there's fix a flat in it. <laughs> now we're. That's great. We'll just, that looks like antifreeze. Good thing uh, we're not using the wheels and tires. Yeah, we'll just, we'll uh, clean that up later. Up next, you'll see this and this. But first, we have to do this. What it takes to build a Baja style bug, next on Carcass. Let's get you guys all caught up on the body swap with the Can-Am and the Volkswagen Beetle. So far, we ripped out that nasty interior and marked the fuel lines to make sure we didn't cut through them. Then we made some very strategic cuts so we could separate the top from the bottom. And now the challenging part, using the hoist to see if we can do that. So I'm like, oh, you could block right here and pick this up, but this is still under the body. Yeah. What do you look like on your side in the back? Obviously the front's I mean, fine. I'm like close-ish, but it's... Like, and... But, but not I'm really. Like not that close. Yeah. Hmm. Shoot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so we cut way up here. We put the hoist in and pick up right here. Ooh. Can you put the hoist Ooh. in and pick up back? That yeah. works, doesn't it? So we finally figured it out. Instead of lifting up on the bottom pinch weld, we're actually gonna move the hoist arms up, and then we're gonna pick up by the rear shock mount and by the front strut mount. That way we can pick the body off the chassis and then just roll everything out from underneath it. Oh! Ooh, that's a loud noise. Oh, it's nothing. I think we're okay. We just got kind of stuck on the body there. Okay. Ready? I'm just gonna kick it. Kick it. And it actually rolls right up from underneath us. Let's go. Now we have the bug body removed from the chassis, but that's only half the equation. So now we're gonna work on the X3, take all the plastic off, cut the cage off, throw it under there and see if it fits. Panel after panel, we're trying to get our eyes on all of that metal that's hiding underneath all of this plastic. Anything outside the roll cage needs to go. That means sliders, body panels, and even the lights out front.
That looks completely different than when it came in here. It doesn't look like a plastic toy car anymore. You can see the shocks, see the engine, the roll cage. Yeah, I uh, want to drive it just like that. Let's go. There's an empty field with your name on it. Yeah, this thing's good. way easier to get into without the doors on it. This Can-Am absolutely soars. With that 900cc turbo engine in the back, our now stripped down Maverick can really throw us around. With this thing in the buff, we can really get a feel for how the bug body will sit on this X3. And we now know this thing has enough power to handle the extra pounds we're gonna throw at it. Dude, this thing's a riot. Oh, it's smooth, I love it. We gotta go cut it up now, though. Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna spread, we're gonna cut, and we're gonna squeeze this bug body over our Can-Am. But first, we have to cut up a perfectly good UTV. This is Carcass. Jeremy and I have made some headway on our UTV bug body swap. We've ripped out all the interior and made some very specific cuts to the unibody donor car. With us reaching the point of no return, we lifted the body off its chassis and started digging into the Can-Am's plastic exterior. We've stripped it down so we can get a better look at the meat and potatoes on this Can-Am. You know, Jeremy, there's only one thing left we gotta do before we can slide this guy under the bug. We gotta cut the cage off. Yeah, I saw you taking some measurements. Where do you think you're gonna end up cutting? I think about 15 inches from the base plate on the front and on the back, we'll just cut it right at the base plate. Sounds good. We'll get the cage off, slide it underneath there, and then we'll actually be able to see if this thing fits. Mm -hmm. So you got tools, so let's get started. Yeah, great. Well, I'm gonna take some measurements. Finish it off, we'll use this guy. There you go, Jim. Thanks, man. With the top cut off the side-by-side, -side, we now know after doing some measuring that it won't fit underneath the beetle. So it's time to start doing some trimming. Got it. Ah. Now that we've taken more material from the inside of the rockers, we're ready to slide the X3 under the bug. There you go. I think we get that um, port of power <laughs> thing. Try to port of power it up. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna flex out, but. Oh, yeah, it ain't gonna take much. The port of power is like a big spreader. It's a hydraulic press that pushes the bug body outward. We need just a few inches so we can squeeze it over the Can-Am. Oh yeah. That's good. Okay. We're not that far off. Really? No. So we just gotta make a couple of those little changes up front, we should be golden. We know we gotta cut the cowl out of it, so let's just go back up, roll the chassis out, and cut the cowl out of it. All right, sounds good. We are so close to finally having our bug body attached to our Can Am. We needed some brackets to mount to the UTV's frame, so we used two inch flat bar and sheared it to three inch sections. 
and adding a punch hole will make sure that the bug body is removable in the future. And finally, we tacked in the body mask to see how this duo came together. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, that's the weirdest feeling. <laughs> that's the weirdest feeling in the world. This this is incredible. Wow. I can see us now just sending it off some jumps. I got handles. We got door handles. Like there's tons of room to put the cage in here. Look, the door works. Nice and roomy. Look at that. Like the door works. <laughs> this is awesome. We get we get real tricky and actually hook up the power windows. I still have got the switch. Oh, we oh we've got the regulators. I can put a three-way switch in here. Just boom, the windows go up. Mm -hmm. This is kind of way cool. We're pretty smart, guys. Yes. <laughs> Two points. Next time on Carcass, our transformation of this Baja bug continues. We add a roof rack, a whole mess of lights, and some shiny exhaust. It's going to look Bah awesome. Today on Carcass, we break some glass, add some safety to our Baja bug, and give it a new sound. This bug is getting some style out back, up top, and in front. This thing is gonna look awesome by the time we're done with it. This is our office, a 50,000 square foot warehouse that is also home to three other shops. And it's where we spend most of our time working on projects like this UTV Baja bug. We picked up this Can-Am X3 in Kentucky. And it had some minor cosmetic damage, but that didn't stop us from taking it out on the short course, where we slid around some corners, got some air, and wouldn't you know it, we even rolled this thing over. And we picked up our Volkswagen Bug locally here in Tennessee from a guy who likes to collect cars. We brought both of these projects back to the shop and got right to work. We tore out the interior of the Bug and made quick work of separating the body from the chassis. And we got a good look at the nuts and bolts on the Can-Am after we ripped off all the plastic. Jeremy and I thought it looked really cool, so we took it out for a spin one last time. When we were all done having our fun, we sliced the top off the Can-Am, lifted the body free from the bug chassis, and slid the UTV into place. With a little bit of shuffling, we were able to squeeze the bug body over the UTV, giving us the first look at this unusual combo. But to be honest, it looks right at home. You know, Jimmy, there's so much more headroom in here now that we cut the top off the side-by-side. -side. Yeah, and you know what? With the new cage, if we use the tube roller and contour the body really well, there's going to be more room everywhere, and I think it's only going to take us a day to build. Yeah, we got two really good pads to start with when we build. Now that we cut the old cage off, we got a really good pad in the front, and we got a really good pad in the back. That's about the center. Before we started the cage work, we found the center of the beetle body. And then we grabbed the cheater and we found the bend angle of the rear hoop. All right, I think 70 degrees is gonna work. Jeremy, can you mark that for me? Yeah. And you know, Jimmy, not everybody knows what a cheater is. Funny you say that, because I happen to have one in my pocket. Convenient. The cheater is used to help find the location and bend angle of a tube in your roll cage. To make a cheater, we took an 18 inch long piece of tubing and marked it every inch for 10 inches. We then put the tube in the bender and bent it to the angle we needed. As we were bending it, we marked it every 10 degrees. Those inch and degree marks help us determine how much tube is used per 10 degrees of bend angle. This represents the rear hoop of our roll cage. This center mark is the center of the bug body. This is the reference mark of our cheater. This is about where the end of the bend is, and this is the base plate of our Can-Am. Using our cheater, I know that 70 degrees equals about five and three quarters inches of tube and we estimated that from the end of our bend to the base plate is about 12 and a half. And we leave this long on purpose just so we can trim it and cut it to fit. All of these measurements are only half of our rear hoop and that equals 37 and three quarters of an inch. Now, we double it to get the whole rear hoop and we get 65 and a half inches. The first bend is pretty easy. You just throw the proper length of tubing in the bender and hit the desired angle. 
It's the second bend that takes a little more experience to get right. Both ends of the rear hoop need to be parallel, so using an angle finder can make that happen. Hey Jeremy, can you help me measure something real quick? Mm hmm Can you take that angle finder and measure the angle this sits at? Because I gotta figure out the cuts I need to make to let it sit on the base plate. How's that read? Uh, it looks about 40 degrees. Perfect. While you get that cut, then we'll go ahead and start working on the side hoops. With the ends of the tubes cut, we're gonna use the belt sander and just kinda sneak up on this angle. Now we wanna make sure this fits absolutely perfect because this is gonna make the rest of the cage build go smoothly. Our side hoops will match the curves of the bug body, giving us more room on the inside. We'll use the tube roller to make that happen. That's money. That's gonna be real easy to weld. With those mounted to the rear hoops and the front mounted to the Can-Am's front plates, we can add some cross braces and then we're off to the races. I said braces and races. So yours fit? Mine fits. Yours fit? Mine fits. Cool. Uh, well, we can't put these in. We got a couple things we got to weld up, right? Yeah, we got to weld the front crossbar in, and then we can weld these in. So I say we take the body off and get welding. Sounds good to me. Let's get the body off. With everything out of the way, it was time to strike an arc. TIG welding is two-handed by nature, so it makes it a heck of a lot easier to do it without the body in the way. With the rear and side hoops burned in, we have a couple small pieces we have to add in for strength. I cannot, my mind is not working right now. Do your, th do your thing, just. What are you trying to do? Trying to get my mind back into the game here. Nice. How do I notch this without using that? But I can't, my mind's not <clears throat> here. It's gone. I think that's right. The worst I could be is wrong. Perfect. Man, did we accomplish exactly what we set out to do. Not only did we build a cage that's specific to this body swap, well, it also looks good and it's gonna keep the both of us protected. Mm -hmm. We tied it into the strongest points on the frame. We added extra bracing, extra gussets. This inch and a half tubing is gonna do exactly what it's supposed to. You know, the way that we bent these side hoops, you know, it fits perfectly underneath the Volkswagen body and we don't even need to put that thing on here. It looks so good. Well, while the body's still off, let's uh, do the exhaust swap. Oh yeah, that's out in the warehouse somewhere, right? If we can find it. It's a big warehouse. Next on Carcass, we carefully remove our glass from the bug. Plus, how we make our Can-Am sound more intimidating. You're watching Carcass. We work in a 50,000 square foot warehouse and finding the right parts can sometimes be like finding a needle in a haystack. Luckily, this go around, I beat Jeremy to the punch. Ah, oh, shoot, dude, you already found the exhaust system. Yeah, I did, straight from Summit Racing. Ugh, I guess you don't need this big box then. No, and to be honest, this is more of a one-man job, so what are you gonna do? Well, I was kinda thinking about putting the bug body on a diet. You're gonna pull the glass out? Yeah, I guess I can pull the glass out. Ah, Have fun. Right. Yeah. Ooh. I'm not tall enough to do that. One of many. No, I won't drop it. Nice. Oh, man. It's tough work. Holy Martha. Oh, 
I borrowed these tools from the guys next door in Detroit Muscle. Now I don't know if it's the guy using them or the tools themselves, but this task has proven to be pretty challenging. Essentially what I'm trying to do is separate the glass from the body and that's held in with some like really, really strong goopy stuff. I think a pry bar can help me pop out the rear quarter glass and if I get like two of them in there, I can kind of move them around and kind of help push it out so it comes out. But I gotta be really, really careful. Whoops. Now since the first way to get rid of the glass took forever, we're gonna do the second one quite a bit quicker. And if I can find the right tool, the hammer will definitely make it happen. That was anticlimactic. All oh, trick, I'm gonna put a garbage can underneath. That way I don't have to clean up so much. Man, I wonder if Jimmy's got the exhaust done yet. We're swapping out the exhaust on our k and for two reasons. A, the stock exhaust system doesn't look that cool, and B, we want some power gains. So this new exhaust system from Summit Racing will check both of those boxes. Out with the old. I didn't even know this thing had O2 sensors. We have to take off the stock exhaust and sections all the way back to that tiny little turbo. And we're gonna have to make some modifications to the OE heat shield so it'll work with our aftermarket exhaust. But that's nothing that a cutoff wheel can't fix. Of all the places I could have chosen to sit down, I chose this comfy cardboard box that Jeremy left for me earlier. Why I did, I don't know, but it made the most sense at the time. Swapping out the exhaust is pretty straightforward. The V-band clamps and the worm gear clamps get reused along with the stock heat shield. Next, we add the aluminum mufflers. They add a little bit of flair and will make our side-by-side -side sound wicked. We have to button up a few things like the exhaust spring and the O2 sensor. After that, the stock outer heat shield can be reinstalled. Let's see how this thing sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that sounds good. I can even hear the turbo. You like it? Yeah. We combine the body of a Volkswagen Bug with the frame and drivetrain of a K&M X3. Needless to say, our Baja Bug has gone through quite a transformation. We fabricated a killer roll cage that fits right underneath the Bug body. While we had the Bug and UTV separated, we put the donor Bug on a diet by removing all the glass. No, we'll drop it. And we also added a better sounding exhaust to the K&M. <laughs> So ever since I carefully took the glass out of the back of the car, I've been trying to figure out what to do with the opening. Well, I think I got a pretty dynamite idea and I cannot wait to show Jimmy. Yes, there it is. Perfect. Hey Jimmy, come and check this out. Okay. Check this out. So I've been trying to figure out what to do with the opening back here. Yes. Yeah, and these yes. were sitting down by Detroit Muscle. I think we could pull this off. Yeah, we could just make our own. I think so. This is a little wide anyway, so instead of cutting it down, let's just go make our own. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, right? All right, let's go figure this out. So we're looking at about 40 and a half. All right. And uh, three and a half tall. All right, so what about the bends? What's the measurement here and here? It's for the top bends, 38 inches. And then what's the bottom? 32 and 3 quarters of an inch. The way we give the louver its shape is with the measurements. The top edge 
is longer than the bottom edge. That way it gives us the two points to line it up in the break. Yeah. The first louver fit perfectly. Now, the opening of our Volkswagen is a little bit narrower on the top and then it widens out at the bottom. So we're just gonna add a half of an inch to each louver as we travel down. That's gonna give it a little bit of curvature and it should match the Volkswagen perfectly. All the bends in our louvers are about 45 degrees, but there's a little trick to it. After we complete the first bend, we have to take it out of the brake, flip it over, and bend it the opposite direction. Oh yeah. That's a good start. That is a good start. You know, these things really did turn out amazing. For the little bit of work in the brake and the bender, they fit great and they follow the contour of the body. I 100% agree, and to me, this thing just looks fast now, and I love it. But, according to my watch, it's lunchtime, mm. and we gotta find something to drive. All right. Man, I gotta get back on those side panels. Yeah. Oh, and Summit Racing dropped off a box. Oh, that's the roof rack. I gotta get that on before the end of the day. We have a lot to do by the end of the day, and taking a long lunch break did not help with that cause. We have window deletes that we have to fabricate. We have a roof rack that we need to put on with custom mounts that need to be made. Plus, we're gonna put a whole bunch of lights on top of this thing. By the end of the day, this thing will be back on four wheels and drivable. Making a template is a necessity. It makes trimming down your piece on the shear a whole lot easier. Plus, it ensures that you're gonna have enough material if you have to move over to the bandsaw. And with a little left, you can always come back and sneak up to that perfect shape on the belt sander. I unpacked our roof rack and it is perfect for this build, so I'm gonna get right to making the brackets to mount this thing to the roof. I cut one inch flat strap and rounded the corners at the belt sander. With two bolt holes punched in them, I can lay them out on the roof using the roof rack as a guide. That way I know exactly where they're gonna go. With a few holes drilled through the top, the brackets are ready to support the roof rack. Half inch square tubing will be plenty strong for this application, and with them cut to length, our roof rack can be a permanent addition to our Baja bug. While Jimmy finishes up the roof rack, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the scoops that we're gonna add to the window deletes. Our scoops are gonna fit in right along with our bug body, which means they're gonna have some curves. Once I get the two-dimensional shape, I'll add the third dimension using the slip roller. Using the newly made scoop as a template, we can cut a hole in the window delete to make room for our new scoop. Ooh, we're close here. Yeah, that's a little tight, huh? Uh, yeah, I think if you open up that way, the slot uh, just a hair. Okay. We can kind of manipulate this to go in. I can see I'm off down, down there too. Where we want it. Okay. Help us clean the edges up. Trim that. We'll take it in. One more. All right, this is the moment we have all been waiting for. Lights! It's like putting the star on top of the Christmas tree. I think this is gonna be like the end all be all of a real retro Baja bug. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like a race bug. We use the height of our lights to help us get the proper length for our cuts. The one inch tubing is then notched so it can all be welded together. You see that? That's our cameraman, Wilson, making his national debut. With a few simple brackets, we mounted the lights we got from summitracing.com with the hardware that came in the box. You the man. This is gonna be like putting the cherry right on top. Ooh, baby, we got a light bar. Look at this apparatus. It 
Man, that's exactly what I was thinking. Is that enough Baja for you? Yeah. Uh, well, let's try the lights out. All right, let's light them up. For more information on anything you've seen today, check us out on PowerNationTV.com. Today on Carcass, we take simple and transform it into incredible. And this colorful masterpiece finally hits the short course it was made for. This is Carcass. Let's take a look back and see how we transform this Volkswagen Beetle and this Can-Am X3 into Bahasum. We picked this bug up in Lewisburg, Tennessee, without a care in the world on what kind of shape it was in. Running or not, we were just looking for a decent body. As for our Can-Am, we picked it up in Kentucky with a little cosmetic damage, but that's nothing compared to what we did to it on our first test drive. We drove this puppy hard, sliding it through some corners, catching some air, and heck, we even rolled the thing over. When we were done having our fun, we got straight to work tearing out the bug's interior and cutting the unibody chassis to lift the shell clean off. We then started cutting into our relatively new Can-Am, making room for the bug body to slip right on top. Knowing how it fits, we were able to fabricate a killer roll cage that follows the contour of the bug body. Then we slapped a better sounding exhaust out back. We then followed that up with some window deletes, a roof rack, a whole mess of lights, and some custom louvers that gave this UTV bug combo its Baja style look. Hey man, we just got our HCR Racing Long Travel Kit back from the powder coater, and it's gonna make this thing look a whole lot more aggressive, and it should handle way better. I am completely digging the orange. Did you pick that out? Well, I figured this color kind of pays homage to classic Baja style. Well, that's a great start. I can't wait to see those things on this rig. Our Can-Am is the XMR model, which has a stock track width of 64 inches. The HCR Long Travel Kit will bump that out to 72 inches and hopefully keep us, well, me from flipping this thing over again. We'll need to pull out the old suspension, which means we'll make the stock wheels and tires disappear. This is followed by the coilover, hub assembly, and the upper control arm. The axle shaft can then be pulled out, and the lower control arm can be unbolted, which hold the front bumper and winch assembly in place. Ooh, that's heavy. We can then remove the last piece of the puzzle, the lower control arms. Out with the old. And in with the new. That thing looks cool. Our new HCR control arms go on in the same order, but in reverse. We'll start with the lower control arms. Then we'll install our stock bumper and winch. The upper control arms go on next, connecting the sway bar with some links from Summit Racing. Hey, Jimmy, is this uh, helping you hook up the sway bar? <laughs> we'll slip in the axles after that. These didn't come with the kit, but our friends at Adrenaline Cycles were really excited about this build, so they offered to send us a set. With these lined up in the hub assembly, the lower control arm can be raised into position and snugged up. The upper control arm is secured in a similar fashion. The tie rods are next. We'll install these at a base measurement and come back and adjust the toe later. This long travel kit comes with a coilover relocation bracket and it bolts into the original shock mount. With the brackets in place, we can drop in our original coilovers, connect them to the suspension, and snug everything down. We'll torque the axle nuts down to 184 pound-feet, then finish it off with a cotter pin. Now that the front long travel is installed, we can move on to the rear of the vehicle. The design of the suspension out back is different than what we're dealing with in the front. Instead of having an upper and lower control arm, we have a huge swing arm, and attached to that are three radius rods. That controls the wheel's movement as the suspension travels. Like the kit in the front, all we're keeping from the stock setup are the hub assemblies, sway bar, and the coilovers. That's right, we'll remove the huge swing arm and the axles. Then we'll disassemble the retaining plate out back that holds the radius rods in place. 
With all the stock components out of the way, it's time to get some of these new fancy parts installed. We'll bring in the new swing arm, which attaches to the stock location. Then the axles can be installed. This is where all the parts and pieces merge. The new radius rods from Summit Racing are set into place and secured with the retaining plate. The spindle assembly is slipped onto the axle and the three radius rods are added to the mix. We started with the bottom and top radius rods, securing them first, followed by lining up the center rod and snugging it up tight. The second to last item is the shock, which is relocated with the provided bracket and held in place with a couple bolts. Finally, we just have to add the provided sway bar linkage. Before we can see the new stance of our Baja Bug, we're going to do a quick brake upgrade with some SXR brake pads and precision rotors from EBC Brakes. These pads are specifically formulated for our side-by-side. -side. They're resistant to mud, sand, and any trail abrasives that we can throw at it. The SXR pad and UTVX rotor are a direct replacement for our Can-Am. We'll slap the pads in the calipers and then just bolt everything back together. Then we'll slap on a set of General Grabber X3s and finally see the new stance of Ba Awesome. Coming up, our Baja Bug earns its name with a new paint job. Next on Carcass. Hey Jeremy, what is this? Oh hey, uh, I'm just prepping for our paint job. So this is a paint booth? This is a paint booth. It kind of just looks like a big bouncy house. Did you bring your kids to work today? <laughs> nope. We called up our friends at Mobile Environmental Solutions so we could try out one of their mobile paint booths. This took absolutely no time to set up. Roughly enough time for me to grab a magazine and just flip through the pages. We're using their 23 by 15 version which fits our UTV bug perfectly. But if we were doing a short bed truck or an SUV, we would still have plenty of room to walk around. Dude, I just finished scuffing this thing. I think I deserve a little break. Hey, sometimes you just gotta work smarter rather than harder. We did a ton of prep work on the bug. We disassembled the lights up top and out front. We removed the roof rack and we got rid of the LED whip in the back. And then we got onto scuff sanding the clear. And man, did we do a lot of sanding. To be fair, Jeremy did help me in the beginning, but he left me during one of the tougher parts of the prep so he could set up the paint booth. Something tells me we should have drawn straws. We have some special plans for the paint job of our UTV bug. We're going 80s retro with the design. We picked out some bright and loud colors in a stripe pattern that will pair well with our Baja styled bug. And Jeremy's gonna do the painting because I don't know how to paint, yet. The patented design for this booth allows for positive pressure. That is provided by the two industrial fans that not only inflate the booth, but provide the airflow. The positive pressure forces air and any particulates in the air through these two filters, which have a 99.3% capture capability, and that exceeds EPA requirements. The first coat we put down isn't a color at all. It's actually a sealer that's gonna act like a glue for the other color coats. Now since our Volkswagen was clear coated, we scuff sanded that and that's going to help in our mechanical bond. And well for the sealer, that's going to provide a uniform coverage and it's also going to help with the chemical bond. Alright dude, I need a lesson in paint. What are you using for this paint job? Alright, so you know we're going to be painting Baja awesome in this like retro style 80s paint theme, right? So we're going to be using four different colors to do that. We're going to start with the milk white. And then we're gonna be moving on to what I consider to be my favorite color, that's a gold rush metallic. Then we're gonna follow that up with a hug in orange, and the last color we're gonna put down is a blue sky metallic. But you don't just put the color into the paint gun, you have to mix it with a few things, how do you do that? Right, so you know that Summit Racing has a two-stage base clear paint, and we're gonna be mixing that in a two to one to one ratio. 
So that's two parts of their color to one part of their reducer. Then we're gonna be adding one ounce of hardener per sprayable quart of their paint. This thing is looking smooth already. Looks good. After waiting a little over 50 minutes for the first color to flash, Jamie recruited me to help mask off the areas that will get our first retro color, Gold Rush Metallic. Dude, this thing is looking awesome. Right, you know, with the gold and the white already laid down, this thing is looking amazing. So what do you say I do a little bit of spraying? Ah, uh, yeah, go grab your gear, let's lay down some color. While Jimmy gets his protective gear on, I went ahead and masked off for the next color. The color that he's gonna spray is hugging orange. All right, man, what do I do? All right, so your gun's got two pulls of the trigger. The first pull's gonna be air. And then the second pole is actually gonna be paint. What you're gonna to wanna to do is keep the gun about eight or 12 inches away from the panel, keeping it perfectly flat with what you're working at. Then, just make sure you got a nice, consistent overlap and good things will happen. All right, I'll give it a shot. Let's do it. By no way, shape, or form is this gonna be a polished product. It's gonna be run through the woods, hit by rocks, and just plain beat up. Now with that said, I got no problem giving Jimmy a little bit of gun time. This was intimidating at the first squeeze of the trigger, but with Jeremy's advice, I think I did a bang up job. So how'd I do? You know, you did pretty good, and the next color's got some metallic in it. Are you up for it? I don't think I'm ready for metallic quite yet. All right, I'll take care of it. The last color we're gonna spray is blue sky metallic. Now that's gonna cover the whole rear of the car and wrap up this paint job. The second stage of this two-stage process is applying a clear coat to protect our colors. When Jeremy lays down this clear coat, the colors will just pop and give it that glass-like appearance. After the clear dried overnight, we were able to take it out of the booth, bring it back in the shop, and get a good look at our finished paint job. This thing is so rad. Would you say it's ball awesome? Mm -hmm. What do you do with a brand new paint job? You hit the trails. And flex out ball awesome at Dirty Turtle Off-Road Park. This is Carcass. We're heading to Dirty Turtle in Bedford, Kentucky. They've got a UTV short course that'll blow your socks off. And believe me when I tell you, we're gonna thrash on our Baja bug. Hey, you ready to go? Are those chicharrones? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Here we are. Now, Dirty Turtle has a whole lot more to offer than just a UTV short course. That's right. They gave us full access to 286 acres of prime off-road trails. Which means we can do pretty much whatever we want. So what do you say? We go flex this thing out. Let's do it. The first obstacle we found was a washout that was one and a half, maybe two feet deep. And we also found some rock ledges, other bigger rocks, and even a tree stump right in the middle of the trail. So we had to check our ground clearance. We had plenty of traction, plenty of articulation, and plenty of power. And all that weight we added to it didn't seem to make a difference. The next thing we're gonna do with Ball Awesome is stretch its legs and run this thing down some trails. I gunned the pedal and the first thing we hit was a giant puddle, so Ba Awesome got its first taste of turtle mud here at Dirty Turtle Off-Road Park. We went up the hill and I couldn't really see over the hood, but once we hit the crest, I throttled out of it, squatted the suspension, and floored it to the next turn. After a few more hills and turns, we hit a straightaway and I could really feel the suspension soaking up all the rocks and bumps underneath us. Holy cow, man. 
this thing fly. Yes. And we're really working the suspension going over those hills. Awesome, really soaked it up on the trails. Now we're ready to go wide open on the track. We didn't really build this thing with the purpose of trail riding. We intended it to go fast and hit some curves hard. So Jeremy and I are gonna have a little friendly competition. <laughs> to do that, we're gonna go lap for lap on this epic one mile short course. Okay, so we're gonna lay some simple ground rules down. We're gonna start here, we're gonna stop here, and whoever gets here the fastest, well, they're the winner. So who goes first? Well, let's uh, rock, paper, and scissors it then. Okay. Okay, ready? Rock, rock paper. Hold on a second. Are you going rock, paper, scissors, shoot the weird way, or are we gonna do the normal way, rock, paper, scissors? No, it's not the weird way. It's rock, paper, scissors, and then shoot, so it's the fourth one. So you're just a little weird. No, I'm not weird, but okay. let's do one let's way do anyways. Okay. You ready? All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Gotcha. Ready, set, go! Next on Carcass, find out who gets a better time in our friendly competition and the jump you won't want to miss. So we're gonna lay some simple ground rules down. We're gonna start here, we're gonna stop here, and whoever gets here the fastest, well, they're the winner. Ready, set, go! I had a strong start in this friendly competition between Jeremy and I. Smashing the pedal to the floor, I hit the turn at roughly 30 miles an hour, and I made sure to gun it as I pulled out of the corner because I was excited to hit the tabletop for the first time. Now, I didn't land perfectly straight, but a quick recovery kept me on track as I hit the second curve. I hit the throttle out of this one hard because this is where I knew I could make up any lost time. With hitting turns three, four, and five back to back, it opened to a straight. You can throttle it into turn six, but a downhill approach leads you to turn seven that requires some heavy braking, which was no problem for our EBC brakes, followed by a hill climb into turn eight, and from here you can pin the throttle all the way through the finish line. Man, that wasn't that bad. What's my time? One minute, 39.2 seconds. All right, not bad. Well, I wanna see if you can beat me. Jimmy laid down a great time, but the competitor in me hopes I can do it a little bit quicker. Now, here's the best part. I got to watch exactly what he did, so I know exactly where to go. Ready, set, go! Right off the line, I gunned it because these General Grabber X3 tires grip the ground so well. That's one thing I picked up from Jimmy's run. Coming through the first turn, I felt confident that the tabletop wasn't going to be a problem. I rounded the second turn, gassing it. But this is where I realized that I wasn't doing quite as well as Jimmy did. Something about my line just didn't feel right. And it didn't feel like I was traveling through this part of the course as fast as Jimmy. As I rounded turn five, I came to the straightaway that leads to the whoops. I was super excited to hit these things hard. Just watch the long travel suspension as it soaks up these large whoops. The bug body hardly moved, and from the driver's seat, I could hardly feel a thing. I made a mad dash for the finish line, rounding turn eight as fast as I could, hitting the downhill straight, leading to the final turn before the checkered flag. I gunned it, hoping this little patch of time would help me catch up to Jimmy. My time was 139 and Jeremy's was 143, but that all doesn't matter because I came here for one reason, to see how far that we can jump Ba Awesome.
Are you ready for this? Give her the berries, man. Let's go. Now this tabletop is nothing new. Both Jeremy and I have jumped it once already in our timed runs, but this go around, we're gonna hit it at nearly 55 miles an hour. That was the most fun I've had in a long time. Yeah, it was, but you know what? This was a race and you won, so that means you gotta load up. That just means I get to drive it again. Mm -hmm.